Presenting the Super Mega Awesome Castle Shirt, which brings this episode of Shadowversity to you. Unlike the regular castle shirt, the Super Mega Awesome Castle Shirt reveals why castles are so awesome in all their glory. Specifically, all those parts of a castle that were engineered to kill people. Kill people? That's a bit rough, isn't it? Well, if they're going to try and take our castles by force, you're damn well right we're going to kill them. Or taunt them mercilessly from the castle walls. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. The Super Mega Awesome Castle Shirt presents the name and visual image of the castle's outwards constituent parts. Specifically, the towers, keep, donjon, turrets, merlons, crenellations, crenell, ramparts, baileys, matriculations! Murder holes, arrow loops, strawbridge, gatehouse, barbican, and the port cullis. Reveal to everyone why castles are awesome with your very own Super Mega Awesome Castle Shirt, available through Teespring, link in the description. Now go away, or I shall taunt you a second time. Shadowverse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and welcome to my historical realism and practicality review of the castles from the video game The Age of Empires number 2. In this episode, I'll be having a look at the castles that follow the European tradition of the original game. So that is not including the Asian castle or the Aztec castle. Neither will I be looking at the castles that were released with the HD remaster. I'm not saying I won't look at these castles in the future, just for this episode, we're going to be looking at the European-styled ones from the core iconic game. And these castles are, according to the game, the West European Castle, the East European Castle, and the Middle Eastern Castle. And if any of you are wondering why I'm reviewing the Middle Eastern Castle when I said I'll be reviewing the castles that follow the European tradition, well that's because the Middle Eastern Castle actually very much follows the European tradition and architectural style. Indeed, it is made to look like the Crusader-style castles of that period. The first thing that I want to address is a simple question. Are these structures castles? There are some people who say that no, they're not. They are specifically keeps, and you can only have a castle if it has a wall around it. When I look Look at historical castles, I, I have found historical structures that were identified as castles and they had, you know, proper embattlements and fortifications on them that did not have a wall around them. They would technically be considered a keep, and that's it. But instead, they were called castles. So, these castles from Age of Empires I would absolutely call castle whether they had a wall around them or not. The term keep, I think, is best used when you need to define what the main structure of the castle is separate to other structures that are around it. Now, you don't need to do that if the castle is a single structure by itself. Therefore, there's no point calling it uh, or trying to define it as a keep separate to a castle. You can say it's a castle. But when you add other structures to it, like other towers that could be habitable dwellings and stuff like that, you need a term to differentiate which one you are talking about and so when you wanted to refer to the main habitable structure where you know the people lived that would then be called the keep specifically the keep of the castle in regards to the design of these castles they are clearly kind of based or inspired from the historical square keep now it's funny they were called square keeps because they usually had walls around them now, there are many examples of the traditional square keep, and they really started out when they first were designed as basically a stone square, and that is it. Of course, these castles from Age of Empires aren't just square bricks, kind of dumped down with nothing else. One of the key features that you'll notice about these castles are the corner towers. Towers, or even just turrets sticking up on the corners of square keeps, uh, did start to come in gradually. They weren't there at first, but then they started to. Because if you have a look at the original Norman keep, you can find small kind of indents on the corners, but you wouldn't really say that they are proper towers. It's a bit later where you see uh, actual significant sized towers being put on the corners of square style keeps. And one of the best examples of this is the Keep of Dover Castle. It is a very iconic castle and perhaps might be one of the main inspirations for the reproduction of square style keeps with significant corner towers. Looking at the castles from Age of Empires, only two of them have, you know, towers in each corner. It's only the East European castle that has one tower in one corner. But what it does have is kind of extensions on either side of its entrance, which can kind of function as towers, and you could even call them bastions. 
Okay, we've looked at the validity or historical precedence we have in calling these structures castles, and we've also looked at the main kind of historical design they're based off of. Now let's look at uh, how practical and effective they would be. There are some really precise points of detail on these castles that I can really appreciate, with also some massive big mistakes. I love that uh, the two castles that have drawbridges are counterweight drawbridges, which is, yes, very effective, uh, but a flaw in the design of these counterweight drawbridges is that the extended arms that stick out above, you know, the drawbridge themselves, don't actually have any crevices for them to actually slide into. They couldn't be raised fully vertical. They could only stand on a bit of an angle outside, whereas at many types of counterweight drawbridges, the extending arm would actually kind of squeeze into the stonework of the castle itself. Of course, something that is completely stupid is that the drawbridge of the East European castle is just sitting on the ground. There is absolutely no point to having a drawbridge that just falls flat onto the ground. It's uh, stupid. But but I really like the design of the West European castle in regards to its entrance. This is very well done, where the actual drawbridge part is raised above ground level, creating the need of the drawbridge for access into the castle. This is actually very similar to the entrance of Rochester Castle. Or Rochester Castle, depending on how you want to pronounce it. It makes me wonder if the designers of Age of Empires took inspiration from it. But in any regards, very well done for this design of the castle, except of course for its drawbridge, because it has the same issues for its extending arms as well. There are no gaps in the stonework for those arms to be raised into. And then of course we have the Middle Eastern Castle, which doesn't have a drawbridge on it at all, and there are many castles that didn't have drawbridges, so that's perfectly fine. They have portcullises on them, which I very much appreciate well done. But something that all these castles have, which are a fairly big flaw in the design, is how big their windows are. Now, if these windows were to be facing the inside of a bailey that was surrounded by a big wall, well then you can have big windows, that's perfectly permissible, and uh, it was done historically. But if these windows were facing the actual outside of the castle body itself, the parts of the castle that would be getting assaulted by enemies, of course, that's a very big problem. You do not want windows large enough for people to be able to fit through. That's the whole purpose behind arrow loops. And so because these castles are made to just, you know, be individual structures without walls around them, castles by themselves, they should not have such large windows, though they could get away with the windows that are high enough off the ground. Now it's interesting, on the East European castle, I really like that on each individual Merlon they have, well they're crosses, but they also are functional arrow slits as well, or at least they should be. Something that I find interesting about the West European castle is that the individual Merlons are solid stone bricks. Now I don't think that this is utterly impossible, you could have merlons made out of just solid stone slabs, but I haven't seen it done historically. Merlons were generally constructed out of normal brick stones. On all the castles there looks to be provision for machiculations. You can't really get in close to see if they're actually there or not, but because there are corbels underneath supporting, you know, the extension of the battlements above, that is technically what is the provision for matriculations, as long as there is an actual hole near the rampart where people can shoot down. Something that I like about the castles in this edition of Age of Empires is that they have attempted to do the roofs right for this type of castle. What is right? Well, historically, these types of castles would form an outer kind of a shell, a square, you know, shell, with a a void or cavity in between where the floors and eventually the roof would go, and the roof would be made out of timber beams in a peaked fashion eventually tiled on top. This is what we can see what was done on Rochester Castle. Now just because this was the most common type done, that doesn't mean that castles never had stone roofs, but in all my years of studying castles, to this day, I've only ever found one. Now that's not to say that I've looked at castles where I didn't notice them having stone roofs, I'm sure that some things might have slipped under the radar, but I've only noticed one castle with a legitimate stone roof thanks to a vaulted ceiling, and that is Dover Castle. Have a look, full on stone roof. How is this possible? Well, like I've just been spitting out for her on so many videos already, it has a vaulted ceiling underneath. It's rare, and honestly it's a little impractical because it's a very fiddly thing to make a vaulted ceiling, but of course it's much more sturdy and durable than a timber beamed roof. 
The issue with this attempt that they've made here on the castles of Age of Empires is that the actual framed roof part is too small. The walls that are supposed to frame this roof are in no way as thick as what we see of the stone walkways that are surrounding it. The top ramparts of this style of castle will generally always be as thick as the walls themselves, that is of course unless the entire roof is stone. And we can see by the windows that are on these castles that the walls are actually not that thick at all. Which means the stone parts of the roofs are actually not being supported by the thickness of the walls. They are actual stone roofs. And unless they're properly supported, that is architecturally impossible. And there you go, that is my review of the castles from the classic Age of Empires. Thank you very much for watching, I do hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you again. Until next time, farewell. What? You are still here? Well, I shall do what I said I would and taunt you again. Ah, fart in your general direction, you English pig fishers. You are the fourth wheel on a cart. And when you are near stinky fishes, the fishes do not smell stinky because you smell stinky. There you go, I warned you. Now you can go away.